Oh, hello. I didn't see you there, Internet. Welcome to Updated Autopsy Report, a podcast from Yotsuben and Friends, where we replay the entire Ace Attorney series with longtime fans and newcomers. I'm your host, Ben, and with me today is Desi. Hello. And two good friends of ours, Tiago. Yeah. And Rose. Hi. Desi and I are the longtime fans, and Rose and Tiago are the newcomers. We hope that through both of our perspectives, as we play through this series, it'll reveal new details and provide interesting commentary for a series that's near and dear to us. Today, we have all played the second half of the third case of Ace Attorney Investigations 2, colon, Miles Edgeworth, the inherited turnabout. Uh, if you listened to us last week, we left off just when they found a dead body in the fountain. So we are back at it again, and we've got a preserved body from 18 years ago floating in the fountain. Given this traumatic event, it's time for Uncle Ray to tell us about the old IS-7 incident again. First, in the past, Gregory and Ray piece together that the victim, Isaac Dover, is actually the famous sculptor Pierre Hoquet. We also get several dangling threads, Mr. Master's Angel's Recipe book, which contains a cure, a cure for hypoguesia. Hypogusia? Hypogusi? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, cut that out. Cut that out. Among, no, <laughs> that's it. That's it. No, cut. It's got other medical recipes in there too, but that uh, hypogusia mm-hmm. is the main one that's important to this case. Uh, there's also a possible connection between Isaac Dover and Dane Gustavia. And lastly, the big one, Manfred von Karma can't find the body. Oopsie. Uh, this spells tragedy for everyone involved as the case falls apart, going on for a year, sending Master to prison, and Gregory then wraps up and proceeds to have some lovely father-son bonding time in an elevator. Uh, back in the present, tea carts become vitally important to the solving of the case as we drag Kate's Sherbert crimes out into the open. Upon chasing all these details down, her plot is revealed this whole event was set up to trap the real killer from 18 years ago. The poison gas trap was set off by Gustavia, so suddenly he seems awfully suspicious, huh? Too bad he's not here to interrogate because he's in the hospital recovering. Oh God, he's right here. Hi, Dane. Uh, Blasting through his testimony, we reveal that Gustavia's murder plot from the past uh, uncovered his own case of hypogusia and then take a side detour about dad feelings. Uh, Finally, we hop over the little barrier known as the statute of limitations through some clever thinking and put Gustavia away. We end with, pro- uh, with Edgeworth wondering to himself, should I continue to follow the prosecutor's path? So, like, the, so, the, so, uh, so to recap our, like, guesses from last session, we were like, sure. uh, oh, uh, we definitely thought Catherine Hall was the killer. We were all wrong on that end. She was actually probably just, I feel really bad about it now. She attempted murder. Yeah, but, like, you know, she didn't finish, so it's all good. Um, plus, like, you know, 18 years, uh, she's giving me real Acro vibes, so I immediately forgive her. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, we definitely thought the body in the fountain was Isaac Dover, and bing, bang, boom, it was Isaac Dover. The reason it's Isaac Dover is because Dan Gustavia hid the body inside the sculpture, and then Catherine thinks to herself, oh, Isaac is dead. I must preserve his Sherbert sculptures because my friend Jeff Masters loved them. I will (laughs) steal it. No one will ever know. Her adopted father. Her adopted father, yeah. Um, So she hid it, and she put it in the freezer of the mansion, which it has been for the last 18 years, even though Catherine Hall lost custody of the mansion. Which nobody means that checked. Nobody. nobody, nobody checked the freezer for this mansion. The, the, it's just been sitting there for fifteen some years. Angel's recipe, the thing that all the pastry chefs are fucking hunting for, has the fucking cure for hypoglucia, which is why Dan Gustavio is willing to kill for it. Mm-hmm. Um, my, Delicia almost got pinned by Dane. Dane was like, "Oh, I actually didn't mean to get master. He caught a stray." I'm trying to shoot for her. <laughs> and Delicia yeah. was like, what the fuck, bro? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Crazy shit. I, I'm going to say it right now. 
This is one of my favorite cases. I cried at the end. Um, Aww. At the very end of the case, fucking Ray Shields and Miles Edgeworth goes and vi- like visits Jeff Masters in a uh, prison. And right. I teared the fuck up. The fact that this man, who has been incorrectly punished for 18 years, my man about to be free. I, mm-hmm. I that got me. That got me in my Kokoro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really like this case. Uh, All right, that's good to hear. Uh, how about you, Rose? Uh, I enjoyed this case. I think this one definitely felt the most like a final case. Like I know we have been throwing around them saying like, "Oh, we wanted to make this feel like final case." This one actually did feel like final case to me. Um, right. In a fun way, I I do love Gregory Edgeworth. I adore him. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get like a a team like murder conspiracy cuz we haven't had that yet and I was really hoping for it. Mm-hmm. Um I am sick of Judge Courtney. Oh. I don't I'm I'm <laughs> over it. I don't care if she's hot. I'm done. But she's just she's literally she's just following me around ruining my day now. Uh, right. Like not- she has no other objective. She's literally, like, defending this random guy because I go, like, oh, maybe he did it. Let me look into it. And she's like, no, I think it went like this because you said that you thought it was this guy. Or, like, oh, no, I've decided it's this person now. I've changed my mind. Like, her position is only whatever against whatever Miles is suggesting is a possibility. And right. it's that's so like, trans- That's, like, every prosecutor in every yeah. other game. But, like, at least, like, you know, other prosecutors are like, all right, well, I've been assigned to this case, and this is my job, and fuck you. Um, She's just doing this for fun? No, she like, does it because she does I, it what, she's, like, judge there's Catholic. A, there's a conceit for... <laughs> there's a conceit for all the prosecutors being opposed to you in the other games. She's not a prosecutor. Right. She's a judge. And she is out here, like, trying to hold court in a, a hotel lobby, like it's gonna count. Um, it's, and her it's very only funny. objective is to be anti whatever Miles suggests. And it's just like, can you come up with a better reason, please. I hope this game comes up with a better reason. She worships the goddess of law. I am. And... S- oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Get over it. I'm over it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's cl- very clear that her position will always be, I would rather cover up the truth to maintain, an, like, a decree of law. I will I mean, forego, I will forego what actually happened to make sure that the law always seems correct. That's her motivation. And that's fine, but, like, can't you just, like, do a better job of telling me that? Like, I, come on. I mean, I- I I mean I think what we're supposed to like infer is that like Miles is like I will always seek the truth regardless of the law, whereas yeah. Courtney because is he's, like he's doing what Phoenix taught him, and that's fine. Like that is such a like the theme is so obvious that I wish they would stop standing there and saying it over and over again to me. Like <laughs> like <laughs> oh I will always seek the truth. Oh well the truth is not always the same as the law and the law is more important. Okay, we get what you're about. Yeah, that's fair. Why we probably... why are you following me around on my day off? Uh Sebastian the best this... no notes, he's perfect. Yeah, we, it's because <laughs> we've got this wet noodle of a man he's, that she is some for so some reason stupid. supervising. Dude, and he's he almost had a thought, and it nearly killed him. Sebastian the Best is so close to self awareness. It's like watching a uh, fucking, you know, remember the monkeys at the beginning of like uh, that film where it's like looking at the obelisk. It's plan two thousand one a two thousand one a space odyssey. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I've heard it, of that movie. It's it's Sebastian <laughs> the Best looking at Miles Edgeworth being like, "Oh, a prosecutor. This is what they do." <laughs> He just, it literally, there's mm-hmm. like a thing where Miles is like, you know what, sometimes you have to do this to be a prosecutor, and he's like, I don't understand that, I'm going home now. I'm going home like, to play yeah, with my true. He, does, he does do that, he's literally just like, I'm going now, I can't think about that, that's yeah, too big for my I brain, can't think. Bye. He's perfect. <laughs> um, I don't know, the case, also like, the pharmaceutical recipes, and the like, that was all 
deranged, but it was like Ace Attorney level deranged. So I'm happy with yeah. it. Yeah, like but it's it's a little silly because like he, he's inheriting <laughs> this book. Ma- Master's yeah. Master is re- inheriting this book because his parents owned the company. And but he's also got to secret... deal with the board of directors. <laughs> it's full of like secret drug recipes, and he's gonna yeah. raffle it off for his cooking competition right. against their yeah. wishes. <laughs> so they're like putting in like multiple plants into the cooking competition, <laughs> like okay. which like is is kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, to like get into this whole like like medical industry espionage, but it's really just a, so like far around the edges of this actual case that it doesn't. You don't get like the fun parts of that uh, nearly as much. Um, like you know, you you just get Delicia, and unfortunately, Delicia is not a very good plant. <laughs> you know, um, uh, her so... animations are so cute, though. I forgive her. Yes, yes. Um, uh, she's a baddie, and I instantly forgive her. Catherine Hall, same goes for her. Just Courtney does not get the same level of respect. <laughs> she's okay. annoying me. She's a baddie, but she's like just bad. She's objectively the most my type. And yeah, hundred percent. I'm sorry. She's obnoxious. She's gotta die. Yeah, I'll kill her. I'll do it. I'll, let's kill her. <laughs> well, I'll show. Barry, forgiven. Judge Courtney, death. Somebody pull off the metal detector. <laughs> I, we were uh, rec- when we were recording the let's play. Uh, I said something along the lines of, "You know, Courtney, it's gonna be really hard in case five when you do your inevitable." like good guy turn and you like decide to side with truth instead of your rule of law and yeah. everybody's gonna be like thanks for finally seeing the light and it's gonna be so hard for me to go along with that maneuver <laughs> i know it's gonna happen and oh. it's just um <laughs> it's like, gonna be so oh, okay. obnoxious like oh okay well forgive me for all the other like innocent people you made suffer because you, you did the one good thing one time Ooh. i mean it's ace attorney logic but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's Manfred there's, Barn Karma went to prison. He's dead. I th- yeah. Maybe. There's no know. there's no way Manfred from Karma, the world's most dead fucked up prosecutor, was able they... to survive a week in a prison filled with people he put there. Unjustly. Unjustly. Remember remember Christoph Gavin though. What about him? Remember his whole situation in prison? Oh yeah, where I feel he was like, like Von Karma. Tea absolutely has a similar prison cell if he oh, if he actually yeah. went to prison the he difference is rich. the f- difference is that Christoph Gavin was a defense attorney and therefore mm-hmm. the people in prison was probably people he defended he was in where... solitary too for like being a serial killer yeah but that's fine uh <laughs> Manfred von Karma only killed like two people Manfred von Karma of. is responsible for hundreds of unjust arrests there's no way he was oh, yeah, able to dead. reach the cafeteria without getting fucking killed. <laughs> yeah, right. the, uh, he's definitely dead. All I mean, the fucking I would be am- delighted to see him again because I love my shitty old men. But no, he's dead. all all the fucking uh, like animals in the prison have also have reason to kill Manfred for karma. Right. They have been trained to like right. see that yeah, stupid yeah, ass yeah. bastard and kill him on sight. <laughs> yeah, no. So, the thing about Ace Attorney like convictions right like von karma or you know various other characters they exist in essentially a schrodinger's prisoner state where they have they've been put in prison forever and maybe have been on even death row and maybe been executed but we're never going to exactly say in game in canon yeah. what happened to I mean, them they just went to prison and now they're in this little box can, this yeah. schrodinger's box <laughs> you can be a death row for like a really long time so we all we only know one person who bit it rest in peace delilah what's her name dahlia dahlia hawthorne yes hawthorne. we know we know for sure she bit it she yeah. got yeah, the that's rope true. that's she crazy uh, that's she's... crazy I mean, she is our only, like, actual serial killer, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, also, uh, there's, um... Well, yeah, I guess being an assassin does not make you a serial killer. No. Um, anyway... The serial the... killers do, like, spree killings, usually. Yeah, we we gotta go back to the sugary case. Um, oh, yeah, okay. We, remember, we th- we talked so much about how we dislike Judge Courtney that, like, <laughs> we, we put her in the same ranking of Dahlia Hawthorne for villain <laughs> like well Dahlia <laughs> Hawthorne quite, was but... less annoying 
That's true. Um, I think it in the in the back half in the like the the flashback before we get back to the present. Um, the one other thing I wanted to bring up was: Did anybody else crack up when Von Karma said the name of the other detective who did the work for him before Bad came Rip on? Rip Lancer. Rip Lacer. Rip Lacer. Oh, Rip, oh, Rip ha, Lacer. Ha, 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 ha. Oh. Rip. And also, he rips and lacerates his sure. uh, interrogate his, the people when he's interrogating them. I guess because obviously he did a number on Master that his hair turned white. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. But um. So yeah. Rip Lacer. <laughs> it's dropped <laughs> once and never addressed That's again. Very silly. But I I cracked up. I did I find it. a grammatical <laughs> error in the translation, but. Oh, we have I think we've seen bad. one or two. I, so the yeah. thing about Rip Lacer is that I thought, I don't know why, I thought he was the shark-headed dude from Apollo. Remember the, uh, um, what's that dude's no, name? That... He also has a radical name. Yeah, uh, wasn't it, uh, Damien? Or no, am I thinking of somebody else? No, Damien. I'd have to, I'd have, I'd have to, yeah, that's a different so i'd have to pull up the character list i'll, here I'll pull it up check. i'll pull it up don't worry about me um apollo shark guy darian percent <laughs> yeah. darian da- not damien darian i just thought percent. that if i think of the name rip lacer i think of the radical shark guy because like right. there's no way you're named rip without being like a dude who smokes 10 packs of cigarettes and does wheelies every time is that just me? It looks like it's just me. No one else is agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just <laughs> <laughs> no one else is agreeing. Okay, I so... honestly like barely even registered it because I'm so bad at puns. Um, uh, I didn't register it because that name the the first name Rip was so radical to me that I just straight up did not parse the rest of his name. That's I was very like, fair. I was Anytime like, somebody says Rip, I'm always like, hmm, they bleed. Uh, every time someone says Rip, I think of a uh, hey. hey. Um, <laughs> so Manfred von Karma can't find the body. No, and he's stressed about it. Yeah, he, he like the first time we see him sweating like in a while. Well, because uh, he's like, uh, because the police. <laughs> I got the impression the police straight up lied to him too. Because yeah. he he goes forward with this on account of all right, well this checks out because this is where the body was found mm-hmm. and later finds out. So they must have like, well, at the very least they like withheld information from him, which is super weird. Maybe they don't like him either. I don't blame no, him. No one likes him, <laughs> but it's don't... like, you know, he realized he made a mistake, which he almost never, he doesn't seem like the kind of dad to do that very often. Of course, he doesn't acknowledge it and doubles down, but still. Like, somebody screwed him over, and I'm okay yeah. with that. He, he still, like, leans into it then, right? He's yeah. like, well, if I can't find the body, I'm going to continue this cover-up. I am not going to let this get out yeah. at all. Um, it's so, like yeah. That, 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 insane. Yeah, I just, <laughs> why would you, the the balls of the police officer who was like, yeah, I'm going to lie to Manfred von Karma and say we found the body. Like, dude. Dude, he probably no no joke. That cop probably ended up in prison. Uh, I hundred yeah, percent believe that, that man cop from our... disappeared. Yeah, that guy went away to the farm. No, with I all totally... the other cops. The farm. I, <laughs> I totally believe that Manfred von Karma would prosecute police officers for the sole purpose of buffering up his status. He would absolutely find a police officer of any mal wrong, accuse him of a crime, and get him in prison just to be like oh look at my perfect record i got plus one i that's mean good, that's good kdr if if only <laughs> cops would, would be prosecuted for their crime uh, fair so fair. Uh, <laughs> yeah but yeah i don't so, know kind of a kind of a wacky ass time i just like gregory edgeworth love that yeah. guy so cute uh, it, it, i i do like his uh goofy animation with um pulling his collar up real high you know is kind of fun he looks like an old timey detective but he's like a lawyer yeah (laughs) so with the body missing 
and there not being much to go on, including the sculptures disappearing, melting seemingly, but you know, we know now that they were moved uh, and preserved. But that causes the trial to go on for a year because this was before the three day trial restriction. So it went on for a whole year until finally uh, Master gave in and, you know, uh, gave his confession. And he was convicted as an accomplice to murder. Mm. Uh, And so uh, this is kind of where things are left off then. You know, we get our little graphic of Gregory Edgeworth in court. (laughs) You know, this clearly piece of an art that they just scaled down and, and slapped on the background. They made his head it. a little bit too small in that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It was uh, not the right size that it had been previously. He got smarter. Uh, wait, wait. Wouldn't that make wait, his wait. head bigger? <laughs> yeah. His head was too small, though. It was though. too small. And that was later. The scale was off. He got stupider. <laughs> <laughs> my man gregory i so i this that's is okay a, that's what happens when you hang around von karma for too long bro um real quick this we is have why to, Mail, miles and francisco are both dunces <laughs> we have we have to address something here real quick um okay in the last podcast we said that okay we kept asking about the gun right uh, yeah, we, we do need to address it our, out, our it one turns correction. Out those were two separate cases. Yeah. Well, because we, they, we mix this... up the movie. Yeah. We mix up the movie situation with what was going on here. Yeah. So cause... the gun was just the gun in that that Gregory Edgeworth was shot with was from a security guard who was in the elevator with them. Remember? Because that was yeah. Yanni Yogi. Mm-hmm. Well, and they had um, some throwaway line where they were like, and then he started to get involved in another case, and I was like. That where it came from? Uh, but yeah, and so then the movie bit is Gregory Edgeworth is going into the evidence room, pull you know, with Von Karma. The gun is is pulled out of the case that they had both been working but, on. But there. didn't Von so Karma was... shoot him with a gun that had been yeah. in a previous case? No, that was the security guard's gun because it falls to the ground. Oh, remember? and he picks it up through the broken he... door. Yes, as the as the as the door starts to open to the elevator, the gun's right there, and Von okay. Karma just takes the opportunity. Remember, I it's like Providence or whatever that he, he he's like, yeah, he's like, this is perfect, <laughs> my chance. I can just pick up a gun that happened to land in front of me and shoot Gregory yeah. Edgeworth. I thought there was <laughs> some little enemy. I thought there was something about like matching like bullet. I don't know. I don't remember. That was so long ago. <laughs> that was like over a year ago, Rose. But dear listeners, in my defense, I just worked six days in a row this week, so I'm scrambled at best. Uh, don't worry, when you record hours and hours and hours of your voice onto uh, MP3 files, eventually you say something goofy, and we all did. Uh, so, uh, don't worry. It was confusing. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I... But yes, we watched the movie more recently than we played Case yeah. uh, 4, obviously, so that is what's necessarily fresher in our minds. The movie uh, was all yes. it was all worth it for that one scene. <laughs> the one <laughs> yes, where the record he, has been amended. <laughs> the the badger scene. The badger scene. The badger scene's the best. Just watch scene. that, listeners. Yeah, just watch that. Yeah, scene. just load that up on YouTube. And yeah, start it's playing. really oh. good. All right, we're turning this podcast into a two minute watch the badger scene from the Ace Attorney <laughs> movie uh, commentary track and go. <laughs> uh, just watch it. All right, we're uh, done. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, we get back to the present. Um, uh, one, oh, before we get back to the present, the last little detail. They mention uh, that Shields says, I'm going to visit Master in prison every day as much as I can. And then he says, I couldn't visit him every day because life got in the way, but I still visit him, him as often as I could. But Kate, Kate Hall, she visits every day, rain or shine, no matter what, she gets there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Visiting somebody every day in prison, a lot of work, very dedicated. Good but job, she's Kate. a famous actress. Like, what if she has to go away on set? Like, we're recording near yeah. town. Uh, we can't leave town. I'm not leaving town. Fuck you. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, I guess it's California, Japanifornia. So, like, 
you know. She's yeah, she's like in Hollywood, so like Yeah, you're good. just in Hollywood. So that actually makes sense. That checks out. Um visiting every day? I I don't That's know, man. That's a lot. <laughs> oh, and one like, other thing that was funny too when Ray Shields is talking about how like, oh, this case is passed on to you. He's like, Oh, you know, when your father passed on and I was like, Passed on? <laughs> I mean, he was what? Murdered. I'm not gonna say that he was killed. When your what, father like, was murdered by Manfred von Karma. I think, and you blood. and you thought you did it. Yeah. Anyway, I I wouldn't want to bring that up. funny. Anyway, it was such an awkward way to say it. I would not want to bring that up while I'm in a confectionery confectionery museum. I don't know. I, There's I something know. You, you can't Pass just bring up the fact also that you're like super weird to me. Like I've never like vibed with with that way of saying it so oh, really no but, I, well, <laughs> so it makes people upset if you don't say it but i've it's never been my thing bro i i don't know if i'm smart enough to handle the, com- the complications of this topic we're about to talk about right now so i think oh, i'm we- definitely not smart enough <laughs> i'm scared Ben, take us out of here <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the next bit is that I at least if I have in my notes here is that um, after like kind of getting back on track and collecting all their notes from the past, Edgeworth and Ray are now like, OK, well, let's figure out where the body went. And so that's when you start to pin down that the body's been frozen as part of the sculpture all this time. That's and so gross. Kate has been moving, had moved it both times. Once 18 years ago and once a day uh, to move them from the, you know, one room to the other and then to drop it into the fountain. So essentially to basically make it so obvious that everybody who's there, like create as many witnesses as possible so that you have people have to investigate. Um, But she's trying not to implicate herself in the process. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. (laughs) No, we're too uh, big. So brain. for a while, everybody is acting like she is the murderer because she's been moving a body around uh, <laughs> eight, 18 years ago and now. Um, Unknowingly. So, yeah, a uh, frozen, frozen body uh, with like a blue cloth draped over it with the little machine plugged in so that it looks like ice. Like Tiago said, nobody checked. Nobody checked. <laughs> for no, people 18 ate years. People ate part of that ice sculpture people were eating that and there was a dead body in it delicia took a couple bites uh um, and jeff masters also heart, ate some of it the liar yeah <laughs> um so they, here... multiple people ate this uh sherbert ice sculpture with a dead body inside of it i try it no <laughs> if i knew if i didn't know there's dead body in it i don't feel bad but like if i knew i'd be like oh probably i'm good actually Ugh. um so like Dane Gustavia's motivation for all this was to be the world's greatest confectionery chef and also to cure his taste disorder. Which, like, mm-hmm. uh, my guy Dane Gustavia probably could have just, like, dapped Jeff Masters up and been like, yo, can I get the cure for that real quick? And he would have been like, yeah, dude, sure, we're both artists by trade, I respect what you're doing, you know, fist bump, you can have it. Uh, you could, Like, he's making some for himself. Why the fuck wouldn't he just, like, double the amount and just give my man some? He seems uh, like a very nice guy. I bet if Masters. you asked, he would help you. Yeah, funnily he, enough. Yeah. Or, like, just give him some so that he could at least, like, do the the thing properly, the whole competition properly. I Well, no, the issue is that, like, Dane Gustavio was cheating with my man, uh... Isaac Dover. Isaac Dover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, seems like a real, like, shitbag, too. Oh, I mean, Dan Gustavia, as soon as he got his taste back, abandoned his son. Oh, I mean, and... both of them. Like, oh, Isaac yeah. also seemed like an absolute dick. Oh, Isaac Dover. Yeah, because he then tried to threaten him, get uh, extort him for money. Yeah. yeah. And, like, made fun of him and shit. It was, like, a, an asshole. So they both suck. All this over, like, some candy. Like, over some fucking fondant sculptures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just taking it easy <laughs> um so like dang i i want to know about dang gustavia's son straight up abandoned man i'm sure we haven't seen any like mysterious child characters saying anything cryptic yeah i definitely feel like museum. that uh character is going to be extremely important 
the one uh, who was like in the museum being like, "Oh, this." Both sculpture. of them. Yeah. In the picture. Yeah. Wait, what pic? Oh, yeah. We've only yeah. we've seen one mysterious child so far, but there could be more. The thing is, though, is yeah. that it's been eighteen years. The kid wouldn't mysterious be a kid child anymore. in my Ace Attorney. Oh it, yeah. It, it'd be a full-on adult now. The child would be an adult. Okay. I I swear to so God. So why, why is there a mysterious child? God damn it. <laughs> okay. I think about this. This has I'll no try. possibility of happening. But what if Lang is Dan Gustavia's son? Okay. That's not gonna happen. I don't think I don't it think will. That, yeah, because he talks about his family. Yeah. Blood well, no. Being and all that, like my ancestors. There are like no other characters that look anything like him, so it'll be it'll be difficult to figure out who it is. Yeah. Um, we'll, it, we'll find out, and you know, everything always ends up being about shitty dads with Miles. It really this does. Guy. This guy is like, he got how a can you uncle, abandon though. a child, your child, for like your pride or whatever? We need to get uh, Miles Edward like, with, like a, a shitty milf. You know what I mean? Like we got we got to introduce a, a mother milf. figure, a mother figure, but like who's also shitty, so that like he knows that both can be I shitty. Think he deserves a break. <laughs> oh, fair, good point. <laughs> I didn't his, think his dad got murdered. The guy who like adopted him eventually just got like I I like tired of him and tried to also kill him just because like yeah a real Count Olaf situation here. Uh, wild. Uh, I so like we saw the mystery. Dan Gustavi is like, you can't arrest me. Statue of limitations, and of course, Judge Courtney is like, yeah, fuck you, Miles. Oh, we get a cute new law book to add to our um evidence yeah, wagon. Yeah, on it this time. That's like yeah. I didn't... Yeah. <laughs> There's the... evidence law, Ducky, and statute of limitations, Kitty. Oh my. <laughs> So we perfect. We get the kitty to tell us how statute limitations work, and the the conceit is that like, yeah, this happened 18 years ago, but because uh you left the country, that paused the timer, and because uh Jeff Masters was tried as an accomplice, uh well no he was acquitted not acquitted he was a indicted convicted yeah he was he, he, yeah, he was convicted as, as as an accomplice yeah yeah he was convicted as an accomplice. That also paused the statute of limitations. So you dumbass motherfucker, you're going to prison, idiot. Um, yep. I don't know the... if we've talked about this too, but 15 years for murder? Really short. Really short. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really <laughs> short. Murder is usually a lot longer. In, in the state of California, it's life. There's no, there's no statute of limitations on murder. Right. Uh, have you guys ever watched the show... Uh recess yes <laughs> um this incredible, is relevant huh? incredible segue <laughs> so um in the show recess uh there is an episode in which uh they find like an abandoned part of the school behind like a locker mm -hmm. like a really old part of the school and they find a statue that was stolen st like years like i think like 50 years ago and they were like, wow, and the statute of limitations for stealing the statue just passed. 50 years to steal a statue, but 15 for murder. <laughs> I think it's very funny. They, these shows obviously don't take place in the same universe, but... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Imagine if it did. Are you sure? <laughs> I just, whenever I think about Who statue... Would you rather take legal advice from... <laughs> The world of Ace Attorney or the world of Recess? <laughs> With TJ and all of his friends. Um, Spinelli. Sp <laughs> Spinelli. The way you said that, you like threw Spinelli. that up. Spinelli. Um, so like, I was just thinking about her the other day. I was like, hmm, Recess. Anyway. So, like, that's the only other piece of media that I think about when I think about the Statue of Limitations. So when they brought it up here, I was like, oh, just like Recess. Um... And that's that's the segue. That's the wiki walk my brain <laughs> went when I think about this. Um, yeah, my my guy got caught because he opened his fucking mouth. And like to be fair, he did think he was home free. All he and had to he do is a murderer. He is a murderer. He should be punished. Uh, real talk. Let my girl Catherine Hall go. Uh, she's okay. She yeah, she is... attempted murder. Attempted I get it. murder carries a way lighter sentence than. Could then murder, murder, because the difference is, person didn't die. Yeah. 
funnily enough. That is, that is, that is and a that small difference. <laughs> the difference is. Um, who's, you should who, still get in trouble for it. Do you remember Close. the blonde lady's name from the um, the other like assassin case in game two? Like the final case of game two? The blonde lady who interfered with the body? He had glasses. What? He was like a lesbian. You mean Adrian Andrews? Yeah, Adrian yeah. Andrews. Yeah. Remember how she was supposed to be like convicted of interfering with the court case in order to fucking pin it on our client? And to be fair, it was our client's fault. Um, Didn't she like she did, do some time, did for do that? Yeah. time for that? Uh, she did time. Yeah. I thought that she. Uh, yeah. I thought her punishment was to work at a mall. <laughs> she did time, and then she worked at the mall right yeah. after that. She got. She got out of of prison. She. There's some line anybody, about like, oh, hey, Adrian, nice to see you after you just got out of prison or something like that. Oh, I okay. I was under it the implication. It might not be exactly that, but it's... Yeah. She probably did a couple of years. If no, that. no way, because the time difference between case two and case... Th- the game, game two and game three are not that long. It's only like a year at most. So, yeah, yeah. she spent so she, she spent pro- maybe a year, maybe six a year. months, you know, yeah. for... <laughs> For interfering for with a body, yeah, or, yeah. yeah, for interfering with a I body. Stop, I gotta stop trying to apply normal <laughs> logic to this. Yeah, bullshit. everything's shorter in Ace Attorney world, you, right? You gotta or apply way re- longer. You, you gotta yeah. apply recess logic. It makes more sense this way. <laughs> Didn't have a lot of television. A <laughs> little bit of cartoon child. logic. Cartoon logic. Um. So yeah, my guy so. got caught. Catherine Hall is being let free. Well, no, she's going to jail too. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, she's hold definitely on. going to jail. Uh, I, I think. Ray is gonna get her like a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's he seems like he can handle that just fine. Ray's pretty sharp. I gotta yeah, say, I think, I think he's actually probably a good lawyer. Like, <laughs> like real talk. It's strange because this is like the first smart attorney we've seen. I've like it, every what, not not Gregory. Yeah, True. truly the successor to Gregory, the True. only man with two brain cells. <laughs> There's the two good game. attorneys we've seen so far. Gregory Edgeworth, he got killed. Ray Shields, he's alive. Um, Do you think he's his to- uh, his clock is ticking? He'll be fine. <laughs> I think he's going to get killed in Whoa. the next case. Um, so, so <laughs> man here's the thing. Manford got karma again. Here he comes. <laughs> think about this he one. Got out. Mia Fey was the only other good attorney we knew, but we know for a fact that like she was also faking it because we played as her. Um, we have Grossberg. Fuck him. Uh, we have... <laughs> He's be- probably, like, fine, though. Yeah, but just fuck him on principle. Um, it, it, Phoenix Wright, absolute buffoon. One of the best lawyers we've seen. Um, Apollo doesn't exist yet, but he'll also be in the same category as buffoon, but really good at lawyer, because he actually went to law school. For like right. on purpose. Shout out to Apollo <laughs> to actually go to law Phoenix. school. Yeah, he yeah. just like tripped in. <laughs> My guy like, Phoenix read was... some books and took the bar so that he could talk to. Anybody Miles. miss Phoenix? I kind of miss Phoenix. It's been so long. I know, same. <laughs> and the only other attorney that we know about was Diego Godot, and I don't know about his mental sharpness as a lawyer because we never got to really see it. You put a sexy lady in the room. It's all it's gone. That guy's actually a genius. Never mind. There's three good lawyers <laughs> in this game. Um, so yeah, I, it's it, I really like Ray Shields a lot. Is what I'm saying. It's because like not only does he play like he tries to be this Larry esque like dunce, but the truth is is that you put him in a chess room and he'll be like, oh, I will clean you out. Like I will fucking win. And it's I like that a lot. I like the the trope. What is it like? Crouching dumbass. Uh, hidden ass cool guy. I don't know. There's a trope. Yeah. TV that, trope. No, that's uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I. It, yep. That's like like a, what you're saying, though. Like fake incompetence the, or whatever. Yeah. No, that's a real trope. I did a not little make, bit of a Columbo. Yeah, oh, kind of oh, like yeah, a Columbo. One more thing. Uh, like oh, I don't know about all this stuff, ma'am. I you know, I just am got trying to do my job. You know that kind of thing. I mean, he's not quite that way. But he's got a he's got a little bit of that like he's a little bit he seems like he's almost too much of a goofball to be an attorney right yeah but when the it comes down to brass tacks he'll actually put in the work right so I looked up the trope on TV tropes it's called crouching moron hidden badass okay there um you go. and the icon here they have is Master Roshi without his pants on and then he gets ripped but the quote underneath <laughs> it important is Vlad Plasmius from 
Danny Phantom going, this can't be happening, you're an idiot, an idiot, and then Jack Benson going, that may be, but I'm the idiot who beat you. Quote, Danny Phantom, the million dollar ghost. <laughs> I don't want to talk uh-huh. about Danny Phantom. We should wrap this up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still we're, upset. We're really? <laughs> we you do, you're moving. done already. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I've, I've got this case in the bag. All right. No, I let's just go. I just feel many, like I cl- wait, how many work uh, unrelated cartoons can we talk about? Let's see. All right, we got Recess, Danny Phantom. Uh, I did bring in Dragon Ball Z for a quick second. Um, yeah. SpongeBob's in there somewhere. So, uh, Dane Gustavia's uh, breakdown animation. Let's talk about that, though, quick, because I thought that was very funny. It was funny. He makes a candy version of himself and then slices it in half. Yeah. That's what I'd do if I was having a breakdown. I really want to eat the candy. I really want to eat some fucking food, yeah. Like, I've been on a diet recently, so, like, I'm trying to, like, lose weight, but... If you let me lose, all this, this candy's mu- making it. If you let me <laughs> lose in this tough. museum, I would guarantee there'd be no share. I would have found the it's, body. It's truly unfortunate that the <laughs> capitalist society we live in has made food addictive. I would have absolutely found the body yeah. eighteen years ago. Uh, is it addictive if we if we need it to live? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> the most dangerous drug, water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I like, the no, got like, you by the balls, man. I, Have you ever tried not drinking water? It kills you. What have they yeah, been doing to no, us? No, <laughs> like, like super greasy food or very fatty food. Or, well, very fatty food's not necessarily that bad. But anyway, like super greasy food or food with a lot of sugar or empty calories in it. Are oh, the foods yeah. That people want to eat because they're easy and they taste good and they're addictive. And I'm fighting for my survival out here. And I yeah. Need, <laughs> I need some calories. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I would have found anyway. the body. <laughs> I would have found the body. <laughs> so, uh, we put Dane Gustavia away. Yeah. Kate gets arrested as well. We have our dangling threads for the future being, I guess, the missing children, mm-hmm. right? They're, they were in that picture. They were there, and they, they worked. And, and they look a little more designed than, like, just generic people, right? Yeah. In this game. Mm-hmm. And so that makes me think, they're going to pop up again later. We had that mysterious child who showed up once in uh, the first half uh, who was looking at one of the sculptures. And then obviously we've got the last little bit in which Edgeworth goes, should I continue to be a prosecutor? Should I follow in my dad's footsteps and become a defense attorney instead? I'm, I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. I do not know the future games. Uh, neither does Rose. I think... That Miles Edgeworth personally is going to stay being a prosecutor, but he will find his, like, the third middle path between law and chaos. Like I joked before, the third way. (laughs) The third way, yeah. I honestly think that he will find the third path. I think... Oh, go ahead, yeah. No, I just think that that makes sense, because, like, he'd want to try to carve out his own way into the world, not choosing either path of his two dads. And uh, he'll find a way in the middle that allows him to reconcile the both halves of his mind. I think yeah. Miles could, like, solve this if he could, like... The thing is, like, there's a lot of aspects of law that aren't, you know, aren't fun mis- murder mysteries, so don't cover them in this game. Right. So, like, realistically, I'd love for Miles to, like, you know, like, become, like, a... F- fucking like civil rights lawyer or like go after corporations or something because mm-hmm. i feel like this game is leading into like sometimes we need to change the law right because the law is bad or stupid or has a giant loophole do you remember and, and it should be changed to reflect you know the changing in, of society and you know etc cetera, etc cetera, just like real life and i'm like Miles, like, you could get out there, you could do that, you could make that happen, you don't just have to, like, like, prosecute some guy who, like, killed an ice cream salesman or whatever. <laughs> like, there's other ways that you could still be, like, a prosecutor in a, you know, some way. But very important to say that this game has no political statements, that's what the creator said, right? Yeah, no, that's that's what I would want <laughs> if I knew that this game wasn't just going to be wacky murder mystery hijinks all the time. But I love wacky murder mystery hijinks. I, yes, but I have an out for Miles that he's not going to take. 
But that's yeah, what but... I would love for him. And I oh. think that's the correct choice. You want him to it, be like a he... real person. <laughs> yeah, instead, I think he's going to go to France for a while and then come back and be like, I'm still prosecutor. I know French now. Yeah, I think I'm, he's I'm super French cool. the whole time. I mean, at the end of, right, at the end of three, right, wasn't this conversation between Phoenix and Edgeworth when they were kind of like, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing on opposite sides of the courtroom so that we can find the truth, you know? Yeah. Maybe Miles um, can... There's kind of... Oh, maybe Miles and Phoenix can work together to introduce the actual real-life courtroom practice of the defense and the prosecution share evidence and decide what <laughs> part of it is admissible in court and what's relevant before the trial starts. Just maybe Edgeworth that joins the there. PIC, and he tries to lobby oh. from the inside oh, to get it changed. Oh, he can prosecute crooked prosecutors. Also an oh. option, Miles. Yeah. Get out there and and uh, and do something useful. I think um, every time I hear PIC, I, I think it's saying POS, like piece of shit. And that's what mm -hmm. I think about the PIC. Like well, I was sale. thinking POC, like person of color. Uh, and I, I think point of sale. <laughs> That's P.O.S. <laughs> yeah, point of sale, yeah. Uh, Holy shit. There's uh, three brains. Retail. Uh. There are three wolves inside of you. <laughs> uh. um, one, of the one of them is depression, but that's also retail. <laughs> that's also retail? Yeah, that's the same wolf. Yeah. That's the same yeah. wolf. <laughs> There's one wolf inside of you. I've seen this wolf before. <laughs> All of us know this wolf very well. There's one uh, wolf, it's capitalism, and it's always sad. True. Um... Uh. But yeah, and then we get our last little scene with uh, Shields going back to the Edgeworth Law offices and talking to his little picture that he's got of Gregory and saying, you know, your son turned out all right. Oh, and then Greg. there's the two pictures next to each other and Miles looks yeah. like his father mm -hmm. and it's cute. Yeah, Miles' awkward fa <laughs> facial expression is why, so uh... good for the picture. <laughs> That's probably why Von so Karma was like, I gotta murder him now. He's starting to look too much like his dad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's some yeah. real telltale heart shit. He didn't really try to kill Miles. All he tried to do was set him up for prison for life. And possibly, uh, you know, put a, you, you get put in the box of, uh, Scrooge's box of execution versus life in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to, we're not, he's not, he's not trying to exactly dolly it. My, Miles, much like Manfred von Karma, Miles would not have survived a day in prison. That's true. He would have immediately been killed by all the people he put away. So, yeah. That was an attempted murder. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, Pretty good case. I really like this one a lot. I still cried at the end. Um, Judge Courtney needs to be put down. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I'm tired of her. I'm sure we'll, we'll get I, some more. I think that she needs to be no longer a judge. Yeah, hundred percent. We they should. <laughs> she needs to be unelected from her judge position. She's so <laughs> fucking partial. Oh she's so partial. She's Just illegally become partial. Become a prosecutor. No, Give her family. Up. Her her family was probably a bunch of judges, and she had to fit in. You know, oh, the judge family. And they went to another country to put their judge their judging ways into. Never mind. No, I want to hear. I got end. dark. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where you were going, but wait, so, what if, so anyway. she, her family's. So if we're making up fiction now. Her, her, her family's all judges. Maybe she wants to follow the path of the prosecutor, but she can't because of. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I just don't like her enough. That's Dude, what if, what if, what if, what if Miles Edgeworth just becomes a judge? Judge Edgeworth. Judge Edgeworth. That'd be kind of crazy. Honestly, that would probably solve a lot of his problems. Yeah, yeah like dead he would ass. be way happier. He'd I probably think. be way happier as a judge. Damn, he should be a judge. We got all these ways to help you, Miles. Listen to us, Miles. Have you heard also, about Also, talk Dan to X? Phoenix. Just talk yeah, to him. Just try it. Yeah. T touch tongues. <laughs> I mean, yeah. talk to him first. Maybe yeah. I don't know. No, touch tongues. Don't talk. Phoenix you know? has been waiting a long time for that rose. He's been waiting I, a long went, time. I'm to not touch saying them. they should. He went smooch. to law school for this. I'm just saying they should also maybe like talk to each other and touch tongues. Yep. Okay. Bo. Fine. Yeah, I win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's the that's the <laughs> that's the best way to leave uh, it for this case. Yeah, right? that ass. I agree. Uh, How to solve Miles Edwards' it. depression? Come and judge saying, like, and oh, talk we... to your boyfriend. <laughs> we got another like chaotic episode, but they're all like that, aren't they? Yeah, I mean. Like this. It wouldn't be a very good game series if we didn't take on some attributes of it, and the attribute we took was just goofiness all around. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. we came in with goofy. Yeah, but we're you know we're cool. We're cool what guys. People want some manic train of thought, zigzagging all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. We need some there's more at coffee. least there's at least three people here who have ADHD. No, that well, I'm not gonna say claim that because that's. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what I listen. I <laughs> stolen valor. Is that what yeah, you're worried about? Stolen I'm worried valor. about stolen valor. Okay, yeah, I I'm not guys. saying that I don't have something, but I'm not saying what it is because I don't know. I know that certain <laughs> things give me a lot of anxiety. I'm definitely undiagnosed. I'll give you that. Do you know uh, how long it takes to get into a doctor to get diagnosed with that shit? I actually, you know what, dead ass. I actually do have a yes. real quick PCA. Uh, what, what's a PCA? Is that a public service? PSA. There it is. PSA. There you go. Nothing. <laughs> something else to mix up with PIC. Um, this this is being recorded in like the later half of February, twenty twenty three. Uh, next month the Nintendo eShop is going to be shut down for permanent for the 3DS and the Wii U, which is the only way that you can purchase the next two games from the game series. Um, this is true. So if you have so, like, service announcement, if you have some money left over on your 3DS, I don't know if you do. It's a real bastard to connect with your current Nintendo eShop account, but you can do it. Uh, please consider these two games. Um, also, you know, if you don't have the money, uh, it's uh, really easy to hack your 3DS. It's true. And uh, But yes, the, the, the games that I believe that are locked to 3DS currently are Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, mm-hmm. uh, Ace Attorney 5, and Ace Attorney 6. Yeah. And those games so. uh, are going to be removed from the eShop. Uh, the eShop will be no longer available for purchase, which means that access to these three games are going to be very limited unless you, uh, you know, uh, get on the internet and do some searching. Um, I would really love it. Uh, recently, we just got announced, uh, got an announcement that uh, Ghost Trick is being re-released, which, you know, that might show up here one day as well. Uh, and... I really hope that Capcom is doing that to be like, okay, we're going to put out the rest of these games uh, in modern formats. So I really hope that the crossover game and the uh, fifth and sixth game get some re-releases here soon so that people do not have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. Yeah. So uh, we believe please in, do that Capcom. That'd be great. <laughs> we believe in conservations of video game history, yada, yada. And so well, they just I keep do. re-releasing the first three games as a bundle. Apollo Justice is technically exists on phones, um, so you can play Apollo Justice that way, but that's kind of it for modern formats. Yeah. So that, you know, put four, five, and six out in a trilogy, you know, Capcom, let's do it. Let's Been do long it. Enough. Um, uh, that was just, so yeah. I was just thinking about that because I was like, wow, we should really say something considering it's a month away. Right. And we, we are going to be going into, after this game, we are going to be going into Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. Mm-hmm. Uh, so keep that in mind if you would like to play along with us. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you can always catch the Twitch streams and the YouTube uploads of us playing it. And by us, I mean yep. Ben, Des, and Iroh. And yeah, Ben, Des, and Iroh. I was going to, yeah. Uh, uh, Sometimes we have guest sh- stars on every once in a while. But yeah. uh, recently, the schedule's been tougher to get people lined up because everyone's busy. But that's okay. Yeah. So I think that'll do it for us this week then, folks. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ace Attorney Pod. You can follow us on co-host under Ace Attorney or on the web at updatedautopsy.report. That'll keep you up to date on all of our latest episodes as well as the YouTube uploads of Desi and I playing through the game. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on co-host at Yotzeben. Desi, where can people find you? At Yes, This Is Des on Twitter. And Tiago? You can find me at Tiago S. Deutra on Twitter. And Rose. Uh, you can find some of my art at Trom Arts on Twitter, and you can find the rest of me at Rose Nonsense on Tumblr and co-host. Alrighty. 
Thanks everyone for listening. We hope that you will rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Next episode, we will be playing the fourth case. We're going to do this one all in one go because it's a little shorter. Uh, The fourth case of Investigations 2, titled The Forgotten Turnabout. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.